Keith here. Playing MBT by JMT Games. We're doing scenario three, all basic advance and optional rules. And we are on turn number 12, entering the first air phase, I believe. This on the able to play this table lookups you just have the have the results in the gameplay okay so over here we're on the movement phase Let's see okay. okay so we have the fire phase NATO fires first this right here you have that one little recon section and it survived the entire game so far 12 turns he's been in the thick of it for most times and it finally has a rear shot against a Russian tank to meet uh, light and point-blank range rear target facing as minus two row shift to the two hit quality <laughs> two hit quality. the targets a medium cover and it has availability of eight for that and there's no ammo availability penalty can I just roll that so it's going to be chart a the AP2 hit table so it's going to it's actually a minus three row shift for medium cover and you need 63 or less to hit and it hits it hits the rear target facing it's a chemical explosive type weapon here's your location damage rolls of 55 Chart A, the hit location table, rear target facing, and five is a whole rear. So it hits the rear, and it penetrates, and it's KO'd. So that tank, that little uh, section there that could, that's still strong, and it, it was suppressed, but it's still there, and it actually KO'd a Russian tank. Next up, I'm gonna to have to roll for initiative. So we're actually still on the fire phase here. And I'm just taking out the tank, replacing with the KO. So we do initiative, NATO wins, and because they have that plus 20 die roll monitor for being a veteran unit. That gives NATO a big, big advantage. So what NATO units are going to fire? So this is the NATO, this is what I'm looking at right here. I'm looking at the command tank, firing at that tank over here. So you have the command uh, headquarters tank, which I hope doesn't get eliminated. What happens if that command headquarters tank goes out? A lot of my key units are going to break, and that's going to give a chance for the Russians to complete their missions, which is to cross the board. And maybe even takes more NATO tanks out. So over here you have the command tank, and it's but it's right now the command tank's firing, and it's has a firing at a Russian unit that's north of that hilly area over slight hit slight rise over there. I wouldn't even call it a hill; it's more level one rise. So it's going to fire armor piercing, fin stabilized, scouting sebo which is a kinetic energy that's going to be short range. It's going to be hitting the front side of the target. The modifier will be a plus one because it's a veteran unit. Uh, row shift plus two because it's using laser sights. And that's going to give it a 91 to hit. That's 69 hits. And a penetration modifier, we rolled a three and a one. So chart A, the AP penetration table. You look under 96 for base penetration, and that will give you a 90, a mi you, and you take the two modifiers, the three and the one, you look them up, and you get a minus 15 to the penetration. So the net penetration for the hit is 81. And we got 88, so it hits the hull side, penetrates, and it's a brew up. Boom. So I remove that counter and you get brew up over there. So two good shots for the allies. 
Now NATO rose to 12. So this would have been another shot that the Soviets would have had, but NATO won again the dice roll because NATO has a veteran unit. So where are they going to fire next? Okay, so it's going to be the Bradley down here in the woods is going to fire. I may have to go back a little bit on my map. All right, so we're at 40. I think I can go to pull back a little, be 36, right? Let's do it. Uh, a little bit more. I'm trying to get both the target and the, uh, the fire and the target and, and not much more. How about if I do 33? Uh, almost works. Let's see. No, I gotta go all the way down to 30. Uh, wasted my time, but oh well. All right, here we go. So we have a shot right here. And that's going to be range 15. Down here, you see the, uh, the firing. You see the Bradley. Up there, you see the target. The target's actually going to be a BM that one of those BMP-2s, which is carrying a squad. And it's just trying to get through. I'm just checking the ranges to the different vehicles. There's the three BMP-2s of a different platoon. So now I'm going to fire at that one, that hex over there. It's That shot's going to be going through brew-up smoke. Actually, it should have went through two hexes of brew-up smoke because it caught another hex. So that would have been two hexes of brew-up smoke, but I missed it. So it's a tow two anti-tank gun missile. It's a, that'll be a short range. It's a veteran unit firing at short range. So that'll be plus one row modifier and a plus two for brew up smoke. So there's plus three row modifiers to the two hit. All right. Which me actually, it should be, see I made, see I made a mistake there. It, shouldn't have been, it should have been minus three actually. So I made a mistake there, 64. I just wanna see what it would have been if I actually so it would have been short range, and it should have been minus three, I think, because you had two brew up smokes, and then you have a plus one. So I would have needed a 49 to hit. So that, I actually made a mistake there. And the mistake I made, I made the brew up smoke positive. That should have been a negative modifier, and I should have had two of those. All right, so. Let's go and see if I actually did that in. Yes, yeah, so that should not have been a hit. So that was a mistake, but we're going to go with it. Location damage roll six and nine. Front hits, penetrates, and the result is a brew up. So now the passengers are going to see, see if the passengers bail out. Then he has 61 or greater, and the passengers perish with the vehicle. And that actually. Should should have actually been a miss. I made a mistake. Okay, so let's just say it was a lucky shot. And I just have to put an extra brew up smoke there. There we go. All right. Actually, it was firing at a different hex. Interesting. Okay, so now I have some more fires here. I have the four fires in the village right here in the town Alpha 1. Two of those are in the stone building. Two of those are in the brick building. Let's take a look at the shot. So I'm going to fire at this vehicle right here. Now the brew up, the one that got brewed up should have been this vehicle right here. So there was some little bit, little bit of confusion. So. I accidentally took out an enemy that shouldn't have been taken out. So here's a, a shot. So there's going to be two shots coming from this hex probably. So the units in my village, the, that village there, are firing. Range 13. Range 13. So I got two shots at short range, and one of my fire has turret damage. Now this shot will only go through, well, it, it should go through two hexes of brew up smoke actually. 
Well, I don't think I'm going to count one of the brew up smoke hexes by mistake. So I made some mistakes here. So this time I'm going to use the GP. So I'm going to use the explosive because these are light skin vehicles. I need a 30 or greater. So it's a, it's a six GP offense against a one GP defense. So I need a 30 or greater to suppress it, a 60 or greater for effective. So the modifiers are a targets an A type. It'll be a minus 20 dyro modifier. Oh, I did get the brew up smoke right. Minus 20 brew up smoke times two. So I got that right. So I got the modifiers right. I roll a six and it's no effect. Now the unit with the damaged turret, the unit with the damaged turret has a minus 50 modifier. So that makes it very, very difficult for it to hit and no effect. So I have two more units in that village. This is the two units that are in the stone building. They're firing armor piercing, fin stabilizing, discarding sabo at medium range, different targets, and it'll be at a front firing facing. Now I'm firing at the, uh, the heavy artillery, the self-propelled artillery that the Russians have as their native artillery. So minus two for brew up smoke, because the target unit's in the brew up smoke, minus two firing at medium range. Well, I mean plus two veteran unit firing at medium range. I need a 50 to hit, and that's a miss. And the second shot gets a 90. So I got two misses. So there were actually four misses that NATO had. So if it's got lucky. And it should have actually been five misses, but I did make one mistake. So Let's go forward. But that one mistake might have actually saved one of those vehicles. So it might have even down in the end. Okay. And that's it for... Now, it isn't actually... Is, that isn't it for the combat phase. I made a mistake. And I correct myself right away. All right. Because now that unit, those three... Self, those three... Uh, they're two S1s. And they are heavy artillery units. They're heavy artillery tracked units and I'm just trying to see what I can fire at so I'm looking right now at firing smoke so I'm going to, so I have three units each one of those is going to fire smoke I want to lay down a smoke screen over here so that the Soviet units can go right through and there's a success and I put the smoke marker I'm going to try again that's success so I got another smoke marker and I got one more smoke attempt. All right, that's my second. Now one more, and the third one was a failure. So that ends the combat phase, but that smoke was important. Now it's a movement phase. NATO won the original initiative, so Soviet will have to move first. Now those three tanks are moving out now. Those are the three tanks that's on that hill, and they're going to position themselves atop of that it's not even a hill it's more a rise and there they are they're in position because because they're firing down now upon the allied line of you know allied targets the nato targets because they're providing cover for the soft skin vehicles which i'm trying to get to move and i adjusted the turrets and they're doing a crew exposed turret now i do the initiative roll NATO wins and Soviet has to move. So I'm going to move these units out. And these, these are the units, the motorized rifle that I want to take out those, that one little section on the uh, Soviet tank. Most of this turn game actually. So the units that just moved NATO has some moves. Over here, I'm going to try hull down. So there's a vehicle in light woods, this, this wood line road right here. And I'm going to try to get hull down. That's the, it's a 106, it's a mortar carrier. It's basically a 113 uh, tracked vehicle with a big mortar in it. And one through 35, and it gets, so it fails, and that's its movement phase. And that's it. So now the second air.
Good side. The hero section on the hill so that they're facing the new tanks that just Now adjust turret. I don't think I adjust any turrets. No, yeah, I did adjust the, this Bradley's turret down here. Right, I adjusted their turret to the left so they can fire. So I adjusted that Bradley's turret so it's facing up north. Because there's a tiny line in the smoke and they, they might be able to fire at units there going area where the smoke doesn't cover. Yeah, I'm just adjusting turrets. Now we check for suppression. I think there's just one unit. There are two units up here in the corner. I'll move these just to check. Okay, those units right there. All right, those units up north. They are suppression squads. I'm going to check to see if they're suppressions. 1 through 60 is base, and they rolled an 8 and a 13, so they both drop suppression. And that's it. And I'm just checking to see if just putting the counters back. All right. Now I'm around. There's every, nobody's broken at this moment. And then just remove counter step. That's just one button, and that's it for this turn. Alrighty. If you enjoyed that, I'm going to have the that complete log file in my the link. There'll be a link to the log file below. Unfortunately, I have to put the logs log files in my Patreon, but it's the free part of my Patreon, it's the public part, so. All right, but thank you very much. I hope you found it interesting, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.